Hi, and welcome to the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm Chris Torrance. So I was just about to do a video review of Daniel Liberani's Genius 2 when my Apple II Plus went completely crazy. So let's see what went wrong and how to fix it. So the first problem I saw was that the video was all screwed up and this was really mysterious because if I pressed on the board things seemed to fix themselves. But what I did by just poking around on the board is I realized that this chip over here, the 9334, actually controls whether it's page one or page two of graphics and this is also where you mount the helper chip for the Videx 80 column card. The problem is that little helper card actually uses machine pins to mount its switch and then you put the 9334 on top of the machine pin. And so I think what's going on is the machine pins have actually stretched out the little sockets within the dip switch because if I can press on this, I can actually get it to display properly. So to fix this, all I'm gonna do is just put in a machine socket and that should take care of that problem. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so that seems to fix that. It's now much more stable. It fit in there nice and tight. And I could just replace this dip socket, but I might actually put back in the 80 column card. So I think I'll just leave it this way. The next problem I had is that reset on the keyboard didn't seem to do anything and I traced this actually to the key switch itself, which seems to have failed. So we're gonna go ahead and try and take apart the key switch on that reset key and see if we can fix that. As you can see, I've taken out the Apple II Plus keyboard by removing the four mounting screws on the side. And just be careful that you only remove the outside screws, not the inner screws here, because otherwise that just separates the entire board from the keys themselves. So now that we've got that apart, we can pop off the reset key, which is the one that isn't working. And to do that, you can either just pry up because it's a corner key, or I've actually found that using a chip puller sometimes works well. But we'll just go ahead and we'll pop it off. And just be a little careful because the reset key actually has a spring that goes with it just to make it harder to press down so you don't accidentally press reset. So here's the key switch itself. And I tried spraying some contact cleaner in there and working it up and down, but it didn't seem to make a difference. Let's go ahead and test the switch using a continuity tester. So for example, if I hold down the equal key and press it, you can see that it goes off, but for the reset key, I don't get anything. Regardless of whether you have the control key set up to work with the reset key, it should still register continuity when you press this key down. So on this two-piece keyboard that shipped with the later Apple IIs and the Apple II Plus, the key switches are actually held in by two little kind of spring clips on either side of the key and then the actual solder joints. So we're gonna go ahead and use a desoldering iron to simply remove the solder and then we should be able to remove the key itself. So I'm just gonna very carefully put the desoldering iron on there, melt the solder, and then same thing for the other one. And you don't wanna hold it on there too long because you can actually melt the plastic on the key switch itself. So just quick enough to melt the solder. And now if you look closely, you should be able to see that I can actually press these pins and move them. So it doesn't look like there's any solder holding it on. So flipping it over, we should be able to work it out by just pressing in these clips on either side. All right, so by pressing on one side with the screwdriver, I was able to work my screwdriver then underneath the top, 
And now I should be able to press on the other side at the same time. There, all right, so, so you can see there's the hole where the key switch came from. So there's the key switch, everything looks intact with it, the pins look intact. Testing with the multimeter, still nothing. So I guess we'll just have to take it apart and see. For these key switches, they're all held together just by little tabs, which is nice. So the gray part on the bottom is all one piece all the way around, and then that just hooks into the top piece. Okay, by pulling the tabs on either side, we should be able to separate the two pieces. So now you can see I've got the tabs separated here on either side. And this is where you want to be a little careful because you don't want to lose any of the little springs inside. So we'll just very slowly work this apart. Okay. And then inside we have a spring that goes down the middle and fits into a little tab. And then we have the actual switch plate itself. So these are very similar to the ones in the Apple IIc that we fixed uh, about a year ago. So hopefully we can use the same techniques. So what I'm gonna do now, there's just a little metal housing that's on top and I'm just gonna pull that off. Rather than risk damaging all the little metal plates that are in here, I'm going to spray the inside of this with contact cleaner. And then what I'm going to do while it's drying is I'm going to take this little metal tab, which you may not be able to see, and I'm just going to bend the prongs just slightly to give them a little bit more bite. We'll reassemble everything by slipping that back on there, slipping the spring back on into the middle on the tab, like that. So this slips back in here, and you can see there's a little knob on the bottom of the stem, and that's where the spring fits into. All right, so that did nothing. So it looks like we're gonna have to take it completely apart. All right, we've taken it all apart again to try and fix it. So that red sealant at the bottom just chipped right off. So I'm not sure if uh, it was just old or if it's supposed to do that. But anyway, now the whole mechanism is free. And so we can just pull it out of the bottom and then we can see what's going on with these different leaves. So I'm gonna take off the metal plate there. And so essentially it's two pieces of metal that have a piece of plastic in between them. And so when you press on this little plastic tab on the other side, it actually just presses the two pieces of metal together because there's a hole inside the plastic. The trick now is to get it to do this when it's reassembled. All right, so I'm gonna try and reassemble it again and see if we have any better luck this time. All right, that looks a lot better. Let's go ahead and solder it back in and see if we can get it to work. So reassembly is just the opposite of the disassembly. So we just put our two keyboard leads through the hole and make sure that they are indeed going through the PCB. And then we just snap in the key like that, and then just solder it back in. All right, that looks like it's all working successfully. So we can go ahead and put the reset key back on. Don't forget the spring. That just goes on there around the stem. Then we plug in the keyboard connector, making sure that the red wire is at the bottom. So that's pin number one. 
And we have a beep, which is good. And if I hit control reset, excellent. I'm actually getting reset now. All right, so we had two problems with my Apple II Plus that I've had since I was a kid. And the first problem was just a loose dip socket caused by using the Vitex 80 column card, which sits on top of that chip. And so the solution there was pretty easy. We just used another machine pin socket uh, just as a piggyback. The second problem was a little bit trickier, which was the reset key not working. And in this case, we just had to take apart the key switch and fix it. So both problems were successful, and now we can get back to our regularly scheduled show. So thanks for watching. We can actually test it by using a continuity tester. And what I've done is I've actually, and we can actually test it, oh God.